Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Mediocre Mama. It's Ruth here. I hope you are doing really well. So I'm going to be 30 weeks pregnant this week. And so I'm starting to think about my birth and what I would like to happen. And so I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to put a video together to discuss a birth plan. So what a birth plan is, what you put in there and how you might use one. So before I dive into my birthing plan with you, if you're new around here, I would love for you to consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have already been watching my content, welcome back and thank you so much for supporting me. <laughs> so first of all, if you don't know where to start with a birthing plan, there are some different guides and templates out there. Um, I've got mine from the NHS website. So all you need to do is Google NHS birthing plan and the link will come up and you can click onto it um, and you kind of scroll down the page there's a little bit about birthing plans and then there's a pdf file that you can just click on and print out it's about 11 pages but it will kind of take you through ask you some questions um, and really guide you on what to put into your birthing plan now being totally honest this is my third pregnancy and i have used the nhs birth plan for my first and second birth and no one's ever really looked at it. It's never been looked at in birth. It's never been looked at by a midwife. However, I find what the birth plan does is kind of, conf it confirms what kind of birth you want. And it kind of asks some questions that you may not have thought to answer. Um, and it's really, really good as well to do with your birthing partner or your husband, because then you kind of get on the same page as to what you, you both want for that birth. And you both have an understanding of what you'd like to happen so if for example in birth you you know you're really focused on birth and sometimes it can be really challenging and the midwife is asking a load of questions your husband or your birth partner can, can answer for you because they would have gone through your plan with you and they know exactly what you want and the other thing with the birthing plan is there may be some things in here that you've never thought about before or things that you didn't even know about and so it's really worthwhile kind of picking out those things and then taking it to your midwife and asking a load of questions so that you can be really sure about what you want and be really sure that you understand everything. So I'm going to take you through this birthing plan, but I'm going to kind of highlight some of the really main important questions in here that you do really need to think about and you do need to discuss with your birthing partner and some things in here that you may want to then take to your midwife and ask some questions. Um, especially if it's your first baby, you'll, you might come across some things that you just didn't realise you had to make a decision on. So the first kind of few questions in this birthing plan is asking where you want to give birth and who you want there with you. So I I assume that you probably already know where you want to give birth. You either want to give birth in the hospital, in the um, midwifery-led unit, which is a birthing centre, or you want to give birth at home, and you would have decided who your birthing partner is going to be. Of course, if you're still undecided on where you want to give birth, then I think that's just a conversation that you need to have with your birthing partner and also with the midwife, just to kind of find out the, the benefits of each place, especially if it's between um, a hospital and a birthing centre, and what the differences between those two are and where you would feel more comfortable. It's also going to depend on how your pregnancy's gone. If it's a low risk pregnancy, then you know, you're know you open to all the options. Whereas if you've had a more high risk pregnancy, then the midwife is more likely to kind of guide you on where you need to give birth. It then asks about birthing equipment and to think about the different kind of facilities that you would like to use. So this is something worth asking your midwife, you know, what is available to me? If I'm giving birth on the birthing centre, what's available? What can I use to help aid my birth? You know, some places have things like bean bags and mats and um, these kind of scarves that hang from the ceiling there's all different facilities at different places so it's worth asking your midwife what you want but also one of the main things you want to think about as well is whether you want to use a birthing pool now personally i think the birthing pool is absolutely amazing water is just incredible for pain relief but again it's going to depend on how your pregnancy has gone your midwife may well say whether you could go for a water birth or not but also the other thing to think about is is it going to be available at the hospital when you get there but if you're really set on having a water birth and make sure you discuss this with your midwife make sure when you're in labor you know when you ring ahead that you tell them this is something that you really really want because if it's not available then you kind of need to have 
a backup plan and rethink what your plan B would be if you don't have access to a pool. The next page on this birthing plan is asking all about keeping active during labour, all the different positions. So this is a really good time for you to think about how you want to give birth and what you're going to do during labour. It kind of suggests all different positions, standing, sitting, kneeling, squatting. So you want to go, go away and research the best possible positions for labour. Now, the best possible positions, in my opinion, um, and kind of scientifically proven are ones that are kind of more where you're kind of on all fours or squatting because of gravity and pulling baby down. The worst kind of position is laying on your back with your legs in the air. But again, so many things can happen in birth. Nobody knows what will happen or what position you'll end up in or what will feel really good for you. So it's just worth going through and researching and having a look on Google or wherever or asking your midwife what are the best positions to give birth in and to really think about that. Now there's quite an important thing on this birthing plan which a lot of first time mums may not have any idea about but sometimes in labour they have trainee midwives on the ward. Um, and what you need to think about and discuss with your midwife is whether a trainee midwife would be at your labour and whether you would feel comfortable with that. Now, I have nothing against trainee midwives. I think they're amazing and everybody needs to learn. And I did have a trainee midwife at my first labour. And the only kind of negatives I would say about this are, for example, when I was in the pool and the midwife was trying to teach her how to... Um, monitor baby's heart within the water she kept jabbing the um oh, i can't remember what they they call it now what's it called uh to monitor the heartbeat she kept jabbing it between my legs first of all and then she kept putting it in the wrong place and the midwife kept saying to her there's there's no heartbeat there you need to keep moving it around until you find it but i don't know if she was nervous or she just kept moving it a little bit and they're not moving it at all and she was kind of having trouble locating heart beating just kept jabbing me in random places so that happened a lot um but generally overall it didn't bother me that she was present the second thing that was a little bit uncomfortable was after birth the midwife did a really thorough check down below just to check for grazes and and tears and things like that just to make sure everything was intact and i didn't need stitches and she did a really thorough, vigorous check. And then after, she got the trainee midwife to have a go. So I had to go through that twice and it was really painful. I actually needed the gas and air to get through that. So I had one midwife do a really thorough check on me. And then I had to have the trainee midwife come down and do another really deep, thorough check on me. So just really think about how you would feel to have a trainee midwife because I kind of feel like that was sprung on me and it wasn't something I thought about before I went into labour, it wasn't something that was discussed with me ever. So just have a little think, would you be happy to have a trainee midwife in there with you and how likely is that to happen? So just make sure you discuss it with someone and make sure you know how you would feel about it. Another really, really big one to think about, which has now come up on this birth plan, is pain relief options. This is so important. Now, what you wanna do is really go away and have a thorough research of every single kind of pain relief that exists that you will have access to. If you're in the hospital, you'll pretty much have access to everything. If you're on a birthing center, you'll have access to most things, but not the epidural, for example. Um, now, I knew before I went for my first baby that there was a particular pain relief that I did not want to have, a particular injection. Um, and the reason I didn't want to have it was because from my research, I had discovered that it goes into baby and can make baby quite sleepy when it comes out. And so I said to my husband and we discussed in detail pain relief and I also attended an NCT antenatal group where we all discussed pain relief together and it helped me to kind of clarify in my mind that I didn't really want an epidural or any kind of injection or, or drug that way. I was happy to have gas and air and, and the birthing pool. But 
this midwife at the hospital kept pushing this injection on me just have it why don't you just have it why don't you just have this it'll make you feel better but i already knew from my research that that particular drug i didn't want to have and because my husband knew as well i didn't want that injection he kept saying to her no she's not going to have that she doesn't want it so kind of helping to be firm and confirm on my behalf that that is something i didn't want to have the other thing that helped was because i knew i didn't want to have an epidural um just in case you're if you're interested why i didn't want an epidural i didn't want an epidural because you're more likely to need assisted delivery so i didn't want that i didn't want to have trouble pushing out baby i didn't want to have um, a catheter and i just didn't want to have a longer recovery after so obviously research epidural and make sure you're you're fully in the know of what it entails and recovery and all that kind of thing but i said to my husband under no circumstances please do not let me have an epidural now in my first and second labor i have got to a point where i have begged for the epidural um and my husband because he knows I, i'm just saying it and i don't really really want it it's just something that i'm saying he is able to confirm and say you you don't need the epidural you don't want it and especially in my second birth because i was at home i couldn't have one anyway and i was very close to giving birth so just kind of um reconfirming what i want trying to calm me down and to have that discussion and be on the same page and know you, you don't need the epidural we're nearly there just keep going that kind of thing but it's also just really worth knowing all the kind of different pain relief that you do want so for example um if it's your first birth you may not have heard of a tens machine before so going away and researching and seeing where you can get a tens machine from or um things like hypnobirthing or using the pool or gas and air and i guess all those kind of alternative methods of pain relief that don't necessarily involve a needle or drugs so just make sure that you and your partner both know exactly what you want because the midwives will be coming at you and asking you you know offering different forms of pain relief and you just want to make sure you're on the exact same page so if you can't answer for yourself your husband or your birthing partner can say i know exactly what she wants this is what she needs don't give her this and it will just make things a lot clearer and a lot simpler now, another thing on this birthing plan that you're really going to need to kind of get your head around and understand is having an episiotomy. So whether you may get to a point in which you're, you need to have a cut, um, the area between the vagina and your bottom. If you need assistance for baby to be delivered and baby isn't coming, they do sometimes need to cut. So there is a question um, about whether you've discussed this with your midwife or not. So if you haven't, that's definitely something you need to go and ask your midwife about, you know, how likely is it that you'll need one? What's the process of having one? Um, what's the recovery? What, you know, what do they do after they've cut you? Those sorts of things. Um, now, I was well aware that this is something that could happen from my very first birth. And I did nearly have one. Baby wasn't coming out in the water and they asked me to get out. And just as they were about to make an incision, baby decided to come out. So that was a relief. <laughs> However, um, really go and find out about it because sometimes it's really not as scary as it sounds at all. And I had a very, very tiny tear with my first baby in which it was so small they didn't stitch it up, which meant had an open wound and the recovery was actually really really painful even though it was only a very tiny tear it was really 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 sore but I know other people who have had an episiotomy that because it's been stitched up nice and neatly their recovery has been a lot easier so it's not necessarily something to be scared about and if you have fear about it then now is a really good time to raise that fear research and talk to your midwife. Another big one to think about on here is the delivery for the placenta so after you've had your baby, you can instantly have an injection put into your leg, which helps to deliver the placenta um, a bit quicker, but also kind of to prevent any heavy bleeding that might occur. I had the injection with my first baby. And then the second time round, I discussed it a bit more with my midwife. 
and she actually encouraged me and gave me the option to you know see if it comes away naturally and if we were kind of waiting quite a long time you can still have the injection so that was really good to know actually the second time around i did not for the injection and my placenta did actually come very very quickly and really easily so i kind of now know that for the third time i probably wouldn't go for the injection straight away i just see if it naturally came out and if it didn't then maybe a bit later on kind of go okay let's try the injection but if it's your first birth again this is something that you may not have heard about before an injection to deliver your placenta this so this is going to encourage you again to raise another question with your midwife and to discuss with her what happens with my placenta how is it delivered what are my options and making a decision about that another really important one on here um, for you to know so that you can tell your midwife is how are you going to feed baby so when baby is born um, they will encourage that baby goes straight onto the breast um, quite soon after it's born so you're going to have to kind of make a decision about whether you want to go ahead with breastfeeding or not and if you don't want to breastfeed then that's something that you're going to you know have to be pre prepared for discuss with your midwife and make it clear that you're not breastfeeding so that they don't start trying to encourage you to feed your baby another question on here is about vitamin k for the baby so when the baby is born they offer um either an injection into baby's leg or it's an oral administration of vitamin K and this is to help clot their blood um, and it prevents a rare bleeding disorder so it's quite an important um, injection but again vaccinations are things um, that people really kind of like to be in the know about and research thoroughly to make sure it is the right decision I'm not just going to sit here and say give your baby vitamin K go away and research why we do it why the midwives do it speak to your midwife about it and she can reassure you that it's a good thing to do and then you can make a decision there is the option of the oral administration but they kind of have to give two doses of that i think they give it when it's born and then they have to give a dose another later stage and also it may not be effective because they vomit a lot so i've i've opted for the injection twice now purely because of that you know they're just going to vomit it back up there's no point you may as well just get the injection over nicely and quickly and then finally at the end it just has um, any kind of special requirements that you may need so it, you know if you need something like um, a sign language interpreter if you've got special dietary requirements um, you know if you have a partner who has special needs all those kind of things or religious customs there's a list here so if there's anything in particular that you need to make the hospital aware of or the midwife aware of um, just to make sure you, you jot these things down and it will just remind you more than anything to discuss that with the midwife or the hospital when you arrive and that is the end of the birthing plan so again as i said no one will really look at this but it just helps you to kind of make some decisions to go away and do some research or to kind of highlight some questions that you now might want to go and ask your midwife things that you didn't know before, things that you didn't think about before, you can now go and ask them a load of questions and make sure that you understand everything that happens in birth and also that you can make your own choices and your own decisions. Discuss that with your birthing partner so that they're on the same page as you and it just cements for both of you kind of exactly what you want. Now, obviously having a birthing plan, you have plan A, things can happen, but I feel like this kind of covers different scenarios so if you have plan a for a water birth but something else could happen like a forceps delivery or you need an episiotomy i think it just gets you to think about everything and it covers everything so you know exactly what you want for kind of different scenarios anyway i hope you found this video useful and that you can now go away and write your own birthing plan and just as a reminder you can get this birthing plan from the nhs website if you just go into google and type in nhs birthing plan you'll be able to find the link and print that out thanks so much for watching i hope to see you on my next video don't forget to subscribe and if you found this video really useful make sure you give it a thumbs up i'll see you again really soon take care everybody bye bye <laughs>